My name is Adrienne Cooper, and the course that I'm associated with is the Environment, and I'm in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. And the course is a collaboration primarily of Civil and Environmental Engineering along with Mechanical Engineering, Biology, and Political Science. One of the things that I think is kind of neat about the course, um, we've modeled it after a course that existed before. We've been able to really take the best of what we did with that course and bring it into the Gen Ed course. One of the things that we're doing in the class now is that we have the students um, take a newspaper article and um, look at that newspaper article and critically evaluate it. And they don't do this obviously just once, they do it several times during the semester so that they get the feedback. We do it in class a few times, they get the feedback and so hopefully by the end of the semester they really have learned how to really evaluate news sources and understand the biases and have an ability to sort of differentiate between what indeed is scientifically accurate and what may be sort of pushing the envelope or may not be as accurate as possible. We as um, individuals have to make decisions that either affect us specifically or affect the population at large. We vote for people based on what they have to say. If your understanding of their position is based on things that are inaccurate, then it can be very difficult to overcome. Just because it's on CNN, doesn't, that's not, that alone doesn't make it credible. We look at the underlying scientific principles, ideally so that the students can make up their own minds about these issues, that they have an understanding of what's accurate and what's, what's scientifically accurate, what the difference is between science as opposed to um, pseudoscience or frontier science or things that people um, would like you to believe are science but really aren't. The debates are probably the things that they do in the class that I'm most excited about and we do quite a bit of group work in the class. Um, a lot of times one of the things is we form the debate teams fairly early in the semester and then so that the students actually get used to working with each other in small groups. One of the topics actually that we're using this year that I thought was really interesting um, is the responsibility for um, addressing issues of global climate change, a local responsibility or a global responsibility. And while that sounds more like sort of a political debate, it's really on a lot of levels a scientific debate too because the, it goes directly to whether how what we do here affects people in other places and vice versa, how what people do other places affects us here and there's a whole lot of scientific principle that the students will need to back up whatever argument that they use. Um, another one is the debate over whether or not we should be involved obviously in the Kyoto Protocol. Um, another topic uh, is the topic of zero emissions and is that is a zero emissions um, energy plant possible or not. The students generate the topics for debate. The other thing they do is they have an opportunity for hands-on laboratories. In this semester we're doing a pH lab and a lab on energy. So uh, it sounds like your course has some politics in it and it's a science course. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about what are, the, what are the issues that you see as really important that have kind of a political element to them or a policy element that you want to get into? Well the most obvious one is global climate change. And even what I mentioned before, the whole issue of alternative energy and what exactly that means and the use of renewable energy, the difference between, you know, so-called clean coal as an alternative fuel versus actually using a truly renewable source for biomass. You know, you, we can clean the coal, coal all we want and reduce the sulfur content, but all that does is consume more energy. and consume our fossil fuel resources a little bit faster than they would have otherwise been consumed. And so as a result, um, we're still not dealing with the underlying issue, which is um, one, that we're still continuing to burn fossil fuels and that they'll be gone soon and then our lifestyles will not be able to support the same lifestyle to which we've become accustomed. And I truly believe that the world, the earth, is going to be here no matter what we do to it. I think the real central question, for me anyway, is whether humans will be able to inhabit it or not. So you, you just said to me this class size is 25 to 30 students. Is that true for all of the sections of the environment? Yes, it's true for all the sections of the environment. Um, Why did you decide to have the class that small? Well, again, from the experience that we had with the... Um, precursor course, we realized that having a class size that small really allows the opportunity for each of the students to be engaged in the learning process. 
if you have a lecture class with you know 300 or 500 or even 100 students it's really easy for students to hide and get lost 